Hey everybody, uh, this particular proof, I said, said when we get into these overlapping triangles that the proof's going to get a little more, uh, more long, get a little more complicated, and this one's going to be a little bit longer. So I wanted to do one like this for you so that you can kind of see what you might have to be looking at. So let's start off with the given information, and I need to write it in here. Angle CAD is congruent to angle EAD. Uh, angle C is congruent to E. So let's write given for those. Let's actually, we're not going to actually separate these because it's not like they are uh, overlapping triangles. They're actually just a couple of triangles. You can see that there's a little triangle here. There's a little triangle right here. And then there's an overall triangle sort of made up of both of them. So that can make things a little more complicated. So Let's start by looking at what do we, well, let's mark things that we, that we can mark. Angle CAD. CAD is this angle right there. That's congruent to EAD, which would be this one. All right, so there's an angle. Let's not go ahead and put an A for angle. All right, we've got angle C, which is up here, and angle E, which is here. So that's another angle. Now, the problem is, is we're going to look for... Uh, side BD to be congruent to side FD, and that's in here. And if you notice, these angles here and here really aren't associated with a single triangle where this line is associated with it. You've got this side, which might be part of this triangle, or this side, which is part of this triangle, but the angles are from different triangles. So really, I can't deal with the double A uh, information there. So I'm actually going to erase that and not consider that at all. So, but what else can I say is congruent? So the next thing I do after given is I just look at the picture and I say, is there anything else I know to be congruent? And I can see that this line right here, AD, is part of both triangles, both the big triangles. So I'm going to mark that congruent and I'll call that AD is congruent to AD because of the reflexive property. Okay. So, now, the whole goal here is to get this side and this side congruent. So how can I do that? So like I, I kind of said this before, sometimes we have to use other triangles to prove that different triangles are congruent to find out information like this. So we're going to look right now, and I can see I have enough information to show that this overall triangle is congruent to this overall triangle. So I can say that triangle CAD... C-A-D, that top triangle, is congruent to triangle um, E-A-D, the bottom triangle. And the reason? Well, I've got an angle, I've got a side, I've got an angle, but it's actually not the included side, so it's angle, angle, side. So angle, angle, side is the reason for that. Okay, so that's important, because remember, once I have a congru congruent triangles, I have three congruent angles and three congruent sides, six things that I can mark congruent. And I've only got three things marked here congruent. So let's start thinking about more things that are congruent. So that means that this, is congru this side here is congruent to this side. It means that, uh, what else does it mean? It means that, oh, it means that AC is congruent to AE, although I'm not going to need that. We do know that entire side is congruent to that entire side. And we also know that the angle right, where is it? This overall angle is congruent to this overall angle all the way through these two. And again, I'm not going to use that, but I am going to use this one. So I want to say that CD is congruent to E. No, it's not. It's, uh, yeah, ED. Those are congruent because of CPCTC. Because the triangles were congruent, that means that part was congruent. So CPCTC. All right. So now I have that. I'm now going to focus on the two sides that we need to show. And I notice that there's a triangle right here that includes that side right here. So that's the, that's the triangle I'm focusing on. Can I show that these two triangles are congruent? Because if I can, then I can show that and that are congruent, again, using CPCTC. Now, what can I use? Well, I see it right here. This angle right there and that angle right there 
are what type of angles? They are vertical angles. So I'm going to mark angle B, D, C. Close this up. Congruent to angle F, D, E. B, D, C, F, D, E. Yes, F, D, E. Because they are vertical angles, and vertical angles are congruent. Okay, so now take a look at what I have. This triangle has got two angles congruent and a side in between. This triangle has two angles congruent and the side in between, which means that those two little tiny triangles are congruent. So triangle BDC is congruent to triangle FDE. Sorry about that. There they are, written them down. And the reason they are is because of angle, side, angle. Angle, side, angle. That's the reason they're congruent. Okay, last part of this. Now that they're congruent, go back. Every corresponding piece of those two triangles are congruent, including those two, those two sides that we want to know about. We want to know about BD and FD. And now we can say BD is congruent to FD. And that's our proof statement from up here. And the reason is because, again, CPCTC. Now that's a long proof. Let me kind of run through it again, just sort of so you can see it. To give an information, the reflexive side, we, we show that this overall big triangle is congruent to that big triangle. Then we can say the pieces are congruent because of CPCTC. Then we focus on the two small triangles and we get vertical angles, the triangle is congruent, and our final position is congruent as well. And that's a long proof, but there it is for you.